Well, that was uh, Katie Watson. Let's go to Bogotá now in Colombia, where we can speak to Provash Buden. He's the regional director for the Americas at uh, Mercy Corps, which is a global non-governmental humanitarian aid organization, um, and they help people to recover from crisis. Um, it's a very tense situation that's taking place in Venezuela. Uh, what does your organization make of it? Hi, Luquesa. Well, Mercy Corps has been working in Colombia since 2005. And for the past year, we've been assisting Venezuelan migrants and refugees that have entered in to Colombia and feel it, fleeing the lack of food and medical shortages that they're finding in Venezuela. Right now, we're concerned that the aid that is on the border is being seen as a political tool to insert other um, actors into Venezuela. But at the same time, if aid does go in, we would want to ensure that it's getting into the right hands of the most vulnerable people in Venezuela. So, so what is in these aid convoys? I mean, what are you sending out there or hoping that will arrive in Venezuela? And where is it going? Where are you targeting it? At this time, Mercy Corps is not part of this particular aid convoy that is based in Cucuta or in Brazil. What is in the containers is food, there's medicine, there's clothing, there's household items for Venezuelans. But at this time, Mercy Corps is not part of this particular convoy. We continue doing our work in Colombia at this time uh, through the provision of medicines and also cash-based assistance so that Venezuelans can purchase food, medicines, shelter, and household items for their families while they're residing in Colombia. Now, for a humanitarian aid organization like yourselves, um, viewing what's taking place at these border crossings, on Friday we had two deaths and I think it's 15 people injured, and there is such a heavy military presence at the moment at these three border crossings um, in Kokuta. What's your reflection on actually attempting to enter a country where the risk of an escalation of violence is so high? It is extremely risky at this time, and we're concerned that if any people, families are put in the way of harm in the delivery of the aid, this doesn't bode well for any government and for any family, for any community. What we want to be able to see is a diplomatic resolution to the stalemate at this point, and eventually aid getting in, and aid that gets in in a managed, in a transparent and accountable way. Um, the, the deaths yesterday are very unfortunate, and we hope that there's no more escalation that results in violence uh, throughout today and into the days to come. However, because the Maduro government has dug its heels in, this could be a standoff that we'll, we'll still see for a while. Um, obviously, there is this standoff going on. Um, Mr. Guaido has said that he's going to personally guarantee that this aid gets in. You know, we've heard our correspondent describe this as a real test of resolve um, against Mr. Uh, Maduro. Do you get the impression or are you hearing reports that those aid trucks are managing to push through the border and move into Venezuela? Well, I think what we'll see is little by little there will be attempts to move a little bit more and a little bit more as the days uh, progress. However, there is concern that if that does happen, tensions will rise, um, that the military will also dig in its heels, clashes will occur. Um, at the same time, there is a lot of solidarity throughout the world for the plight of the Venezuelan people. People want to get the aid in. People want to see Venezuelans who are assisted with the proper food and medicines. But it's very sensitive right now about how it will get in. And until there's a clear solution, I'm afraid that there's a lot of risk for moving the aid in at this particular moment if uh, there is uh, the possibility of violence that will take place. Okay, Provost Shabudan in Bogota, Colombia. Thank you so much.